Hi guys, welcome to Pride Parkway. I'm Jeff and this is my N-Gage loft layout. A uh, little bit different video today. I've been taking a break from doing all of this scenic work behind us and focusing on getting a few things right with the track. Uh, some of them will be in my next video because uh, they're nice quick things but this video had a bigger job and that was sorting out the fiddle yard now if you've been following this channel for a while or if you've watched back at some of my videos you'll have seen that I've got quite a large fiddle yard on the layout uh, it's eventually going to be seen it over but it just wasn't quite working for me there was a little bit of wasted space in there and I had access getting to some of the lines at the back of the fiddle yard as well so today I'm going to tackle it so before we jump into looking at what I've been doing with the fiddle yard, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to um, Jack over at Ratting Road. Uh, he did a little shout out at the end of his last video for Pride Parkway, uh, uh, which was fantastic. A huge thank you for that. And as a result of that, I've had quite a few new subscribers come along as well. So a big thank you to Jack and a big thank you to the new subscribers as well. I hope you enjoy what you see. Today's video is a little bit different. I'm normally focusing on doing the scenic work. Uh, so if that's your thing, have a look back at my last couple of videos. This is a little bit more of a functional um, job, but because I'm documenting the whole build of the layout, I wanted to include this in a video as well. Um, so hope you enjoy the video guys if it's your first time here hit that like button hit that subscribe button please feel free to share my videos and i hope you enjoy the content please leave your comments down below thanks guys bye for now before i start work on the fiddle yard uh for those of you who are new to the channel uh, or maybe it's just been a while since you watched the layout um tour i thought i would start this video by just giving doing a quick reminder of where the fiddle yard's actually situated so right now we're in Pride Parkway Town, which is the area that's been getting all the attention so far this year. And over here we have the two different TMDs, which are pretty much done, um, as done as things ever can be. Uh, we've got the industrial scene at the background there, uh, the shopping centre background there. Then you move into the town, up to the high street, through the station. Uh, there's a couple of trains parking there at the moment. Um, so the work that's still to be done over here is there's a canopy to go in here, which you're seeing some videos that appears and disappears because uh, it needs quite a lot of work done to it still. And then this whole area in front of the station needs to be done. Now I've got some stuff on order for the train station. Um, a lot of that's going to take a while to come. Some of it, for example, scale glazed windows, which have got to come from Australia. So I'm um, hence this project hence focus my attention somewhere else and I also just want to take a bit of time just to think about some different ideas of what I want to do in front of the station here it's quite a big space I'm quite lucky with how much room I've got here um, so I'm going to leave that with me and then as you come out of the station which is basically underneath the camera I'm just going to move the camera now you come round and through two double tunnels and that then takes you into the fiddle yard. Now I know some people like to do um, things such as helixes to go down the fiddle yards, but being engaged, I want to keep it all really, really simple. So my fiddle yard is on the same level as the rest of the layout, and it's here in this big gray box. And if I keep the camera going round, you'll then see the viaduct scene where it comes out from the fiddle yard. Now this fiddle yard's about two and a half meters long. It's 2.4 meters long. So it's a good size and it's already got quite a lot of tracks in it. And the way it works, again, I'm going to pick the camera up and move you, is it's just a hinged plywood lid and inside there is the fiddle yard. Now this was put in when I first started working on the layout and there's a few things I'm not happy with. For example, you can probably see I struggle to reach the tracks at the back because although that's hinged, there's an area at the back here, sorry, it's full of rubbish at the moment, and um, this is fixed, so I can't lift this up. And the idea of that is because the roof, because I'm in a loft, the roof slopes in. So what I'm going to do is, this is not screwed down, and this is actually just placed at the moment, so it just lifts out. So I'm going to lift this out, I'm going to take this lid off, I'm going to get all of the trains out of the fiddle yard, and then I'll be back with you. One thing that actually I didn't show you in the last clip that I should show you is this lift up lid actually doesn't run the whole length. It only runs to here, which is where this next scenic area starts. Uh, I can access this. It is just plywood and it just lifts up. So I can put a diorama on the top of that and then access underneath. Uh, you'll also notice if you look under there, there's quite a lot of space not being used. Okay guys, so I've got the lid taken off 
the fiddle yard now. Uh, it gives you an idea, you can see it in all of its glory. It's quite an impressive fiddle yard, I'm really happy with it, but I do think it can be improved. Um, just to kind of put things into perspective for you, um, where is it? There it is, right, it's the camera. This is the end of the scenic area at the station, so that sits in there, it will eventually be fastened in. And as the two lines come through, two double lines should I say, sorry, you've got set the points here and then you've got basically the two lines that run through and on this side we've just got some uh, left hand points going off. Same thing on this side, so two points, right hand points um, going off into some storage yards. Uh, I've got a bit of a weird area going on at the back here in my head when I put this down. I was thinking that gave me two storage areas for DMUs. Uh, the reality is I then got to reverse them back into one of these lines to then bring them back out of the fiddle yard. And in reality, I can't see this very back bit very well because of the fact that I have the wood, solid wood part of the cover uh, sits there about 10 mil out. Uh, so I need this backtrack to be really, really simple, just somewhere where I can store a uh, big long freight train, that kind of thing, in the back of there. So that needs taken into consideration. Now all this track is Pico Code 55. Uh, they're all full big lengths with droppers in the middle of them going through, all the droppers are there. The points, they're all Pico Code 55 as well, and they are Electrofrog points. Now these points all came off my old layout. And... Since then, since I built my old layout, Pico have now brought out their Unifrog points, uh, which I love, absolutely love these, I much prefer them over the Electrofrog. The problem I've got is, at the moment, this yard's all Electrofrog, and it's going to move to a mixture of Electrofrog and Unifrog based on this work that I'm going to do. So I need to remember where I am and where I am to put in metal and plastic rail joiners, because I could mess this up. <laughs> very easily um, so on the unifrog you can actually put metal joiners right the way across um, because this piece of the rail here can be live and then just there you've got a little plastic bit which insulates it whereas on the electrofrog ones i need to go metal plastic plastic on the v and metal again so that's fine uh, all of these points will eventually have point motors attached to them so when i've installed all of these i've drilled all the holes in and i've also i can't show you because it's the fastened down but they've also got the wires on so that I can put polarity on the frogs as well. Uh, just to help <clears throat> improve the slow running. I did, I'm pretty sure, tack, yeah I did, I tacked um, all this track down. I didn't glue it down so it should be able to just with a pair of pliers pull out the pins and reposition things. I'm going to have to drill some holes. Now what my thoughts are at this moment of time is... This is my programming track, so this can come out. I'll have a bit more space here. All these tracks, as you can see from the picture, the trains have got quite a gap between them. So they can all be moved over ever so slightly. So I can definitely get another lane in here. And it's probably gonna be really simple. I'm just gonna need to put a point in here and then bring off an extra lane, just move them over ever so slightly. This back bit, I need to get a little bit more creative. What I'd like to do, Again, you've got the two lines running through, so this is where trains are running, so on these aren't storage. Therefore, what I'd like to do is try and get another couple of points coming off here to add a couple of extra lanes there. And the reason for that is, because the main line tracks curve here, that means these storage lanes have to end there. But actually, on this side, I can go further, so I've got more space to put a bit more train in there so that's good so we're definitely going to have a look at that uh, the other thing I'm thinking of doing is taking these points out and actually curving the track round a little bit and then doing the points from there I think that will work pretty well and um, one thing to point out a lot of people in the fiddle yards they have points at both ends going into the fiddle yard I don't I only have them at one end two reasons for that the first one is money the points are not cheap and if I had to have, I mean, if we just count up what I've got in here already, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen points in here at the moment. So you can work out how much a point is. I'm not going to say in case my other half is watching this video, but um, double that, and it's it's just an expense. Um, the other thing is because we've come out of the fiddle yard into a curved area, then. 
again and I've had to start messing on with curve points and my personal experience with curve points in engage and core 55 has not been great I've tried to avoid using them on here I want to keep things simple basically so the simpler the better so at that I am going to start lifting up some track moving some bits and bobs around and I will come back to you in just a few seconds oh one thing I only have three spare left hand and three spare right hand points I bought them for the power station before lockdown and trying to get Pico Code 55 Unipro points at the moment is mission impossible so I need to be creative but I can only be as creative as the amount of track I've got um, so we'll see how I get on I think I've got a spare Y point electro front one somewhere as well in a drawer so I'll pull that out as well um, but let's crack on and let's see how this comes together okay guys very quick update um, I have these one two three four tracks um, I've lifted the first three and reattached them and moved them all over a little bit uh, the fourth one is loose and will be reattached in a minute I'm going to put a right hand point in there that will allow me to fit I've only got three pieces of this uh, I've got a few more of the wooden sleeper one um, so that will then allow me to put the way around um, the extra line in there and that'll be a nice long one for HSTs uh, so that's good I had lifted up here my programming track and I actually think that it's still connected at the moment yeah there'll be enough room progress is being made um, it's the next day it's been quite warm in the UK and I um, give up yesterday because it was just getting really hot up here um, it's much cooler today so I'm back up and cracking on um, these this extra lines in so the extra points in I've added some power in there um, so all the tracks are perfectly straight I've used the track setter to make sure they're straight and also my three-way gauge um, if you remember in the last clip I was going to curve these ends a little bit uh, thinking it would give me more space for longer trains but of course that was only going to work on the first couple because then I was going to get a bottleneck at this end, so I scrapped that, and they're perfectly straight. I mean, they're a tiny bit shorter, a couple of them, but I'm planning on adding some longer ones anyway, so that's fine. I've got a full one here that's longer. Um, so this side's done. The programming track is back in. Um, it is very close there, but that's not a problem because there won't be anything on this most of the time. It won't be getting used apart from when I'm programming. Now, I've now moved my attention onto these back fiddle yards, and as you can see, I've took this pointless bit out that was here, and what I'm thinking is I'm going to have one, two, three sidings here and I've checked and they, when I put them in, I did them with the gauge so they're in perfect location. Uh, so I'm going to go one, two, three. I'm going to take this one out and I'm going to take this one out as well and I'm going to basically move the two running lines back so that they sit where these two sidings currently are. So they'll come round and they'll just connect onto the curve there. Um, that will allow me to put a small piece of flex track in there to take the track back to connect onto the points which will go off into the sidings it does mean I'm going to have a little bit of redundant space there but it's not a big deal uh, it means I'll have three sidings coming off um, this line and it'll give me a gap at this side so I can either add some extra sidings onto this line that runs through or I can add some extra points in here to give me some more long HST space because I can actually curve I can actually make them a little bit longer if I want to down to there I don't think I need to but I could if I wanted to and um, likewise when these two running lines move back and I put some more signs in here that'll be able to curve around drop hopefully that makes sense I'm going to crack on with it for a bit and then I will come back to you with an update once I get a bit further on all right guys, so as you can see, I've moved the point that was there down to here. Just put a curve in the track there. And then I've got a little bit of spare space there and I probably could have put a curve point in there and a very small side in there, probably big enough for a two car DMU, but I haven't got any curve points, so that's fine. And actually, it's no bad thing having a bit of spare space so I can lift things off the track and just put them to one side. Um, and then the main line runs through, which is here. And then you've got one, two, three sidings. Uh, even though I'm starting it a little bit further back because they just used to be straight and end here, um, I've now curved 
those three side in so that they go round, right the way around, so actually they're longer. So I've now got three very usable um, side ends. Next job is to do the same on this running line. So I'm going to move it over to there. I'm going to bring this point back as well and um, then have a look and see how many signs we can get in off this. Now I've currently only got one coming off this track. Um, I believe I can fit another one in so that would give us two. Um, but let's give it a go um, and let's see how I get on. So as you can see, this section is now complete as well. I've so I've moved both the points from here just back. Now that looks like it's a whole lot of wasted space. It's probably about 10 inches there. So that's fine. It's good to have a bit of some storage that can keep tra um, track cleaning wagons and things like that just on the, um, what's this called? Cork, um, just out of the way. Um, anyway, you see these big white bits are just where there was holes for previous point motors. I just put a bit of masking tape over them um, just to kind of stop me having a big hole in the baseboard. Uh, but basically you come along, you've got two lines running straight down and then we've got the three sidings on one side and two sidings on the other. And they're a good length because I've brought them right the way down on this side as well into the corner. Uh, so that leaves me with one last job. I can fit one more in here. Um, I could have had that off here, I could have had a 3 and a 3, but I don't think I need that. Um, as a reminder, I've got storage space in the TMD, I've got storage space in the DMU yard, and I'm eventually going to also have the heritage station, which will have a couple of sidings, and an engine shed, and also the um, power station, where I can keep coal um, locals and things like that over there as well, and wagons. Um, so. I'm going to put one more in here, which should be connected to the fast lines because it's going to be a really long one. So again, it's going to be perfect for a big HST. I could probably fit a nine car HST in there if I wanted to. Um, so all I'm going to do, I'm going to make it really, really simple. I'm going to lift up this piece of um, wooden sleeper track. I'm going to put a small piece of track in, an extra point in there, and then put it in there. I've got two pieces of concrete track left. So what I'll do is I'll lift this wooden one and um, replace it with concrete and then put a concrete on that extra side that's going to go in there. Just use wood at that end. And it just means when I'm viewing the fiddle yard from this end, which is the most likely area I'll be because my controller lives right here. Um, that means I can see in very, very easily that anything concrete track is for the fast lines and anything wooden track is for the slow lines. Okay, so there we have it. Um, that's all 12 storage lanes in the programming track right here. Um, and then, of course, with the four main lines that run through here as well. That means we have a grand total of 16 lines um, going across. Um, so I'm really happy with them. Next job is to give all this a really good clean. So I'm just going to give it a quick wipe down with the um, track rubber. That'll do the job. Most of this track had already been down, so it shouldn't be too dirty. So quick once over the track rubber. Then I've got the fun job of wiring it all back up because I had to disconnect most of the wires. Now remember, I am DCC and you can hopefully see all them wires hanging down now i've got no point motors yet so as i mentioned before we'll leave them green wires for now so i'll get all that wired in check that it's working and then i'll turn my attention to improving this wooden framework that's going to go over the top of it so i'll get it cleaned get it connected and i'll come back to you okay so that is the fiddle yard all wired in um trains in it and tested and trains are all running fine all the tracks got power all the points are good now keep in mind i haven't put anything in the power of the frogs just yet um, but even without that everything and the fact i'm using old points everything is working okay so with these covers for the fiddle yard we've got this piece which sits in the back corner and that's basically open at this side for the fiddle yard and then it's got two openings on this side for the two main lines at the front and the two lines at the back that run behind that cloud back scene. Um, that in itself is fine. Um, so that's just going to go back in there and be screwed back down into place. Now at the moment, I have a cover that sits on top of this. And it's just plywood. It just goes on like that. And it means that I can easily 
can't do it because I've got it the wrong way. I can easily lift this off and get access into that part of the fill yard. Now this bit of ply was a little bit warped when I got it um, a year ago and I was had it in that corner with loads of things on top of it thinking that might get it flat but it hasn't. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, hey fever. Um, so what I'm going to do is get rid of that bit of ply find another use for it and I'm going to put another batten in across here to give it a bit of weight actually I've got a big knot there so I'll probably do it that way so a support in there and then instead of using ply I'm going to use foam board now this foam board uh, is cheap uh, it's, I've put plenty of it I wanted one sheet of it for a different project and I had to buy a pack of 10 on Amazon because all the art shops are closed so I've got loads of this and it got me thinking, it's actually really sturdy stuff. Now, remember this is N-Gage. And if I just grab a building, that's a resin building, so one of the heavier ones that I've got as opposed to a card Metcalf building. Pop one of them on there, it's not going to do anything because this stuff's 5 mil thick. Um, and these are really, really light. So, I am going to use foam board on that back corner. Uh, it also means I can lift it out and work on it in summer downstairs when it gets too hot in the lift and that corner is going to have a diorama on it of a building site with new houses being built uh, and then trees and kind of leading out the town. So that's we'll work on that corner. Now for this big section here I'm still going to use this. Um, this in itself does the job. Uh, you saw it earlier on in the video. The problem I've got with it is this back piece. Um, it doesn't lift up, it's only the front bit that's hinged and I did that on purpose because if I put the hinges at the back when I want to put scenics on here because it goes the back here is up against the loft roof and the loft roof comes in on that angle I wouldn't, when I lifted it up, yes it would lift but I wouldn't be able to put anything scenic on the back of it because there'd be nowhere for it to go so by having this piece in here permanently it means I can put buildings on there I think in houses and then you'll have the road on over the join which can be lifted out and then other buildings in front of it which basically meant you'd have the gap of the road and the pavements when that lifts up. So keeping that principle in mind we're going to stick with that principle but we need to make this piece fully removable instead of just the road section removable. So this ply is pinned and I believe glued on so I'm going to take that ply off this back section I am going, this is the hinged area here, um, this piece of wood that I put in here, far too big for what it needs to be, so I'm going to replace that with a thinner piece of wood, rehinge that on, that will then give me a much bigger gap to get hand in if I need to, to get onto any of the trains. What I will also do is I'll put a couple of cross supports in, across there as well, because uh, I've got some more pieces of this wood laid around. So get them in like that across there, get that rehinged on, ditch the ply board, and I'm going to use foam board again. Now I'll have to have a couple of sections. So I need to make sure that these cross pieces are in the right place to support it. Um, probably two or three, to be honest. And the main thing is I can get a hand in there. So I'm going to crack on with this and I will come back and show you when it's done. So that is the work on this piece done. Um, so I have removed the plywood, it was an absolute nightmare to get off. Evo stick wood glue is very good, um, let's put it that way, but anyway it's off. I, there's some remnants still there, I had to sand it down to get it all to come off. Um, the new thinner pieces in, the cross braces are in there as well, uh, and the hinged door is back on as well. Now please, I'm not a carpenter. Um, so I'm happy with that, it works pretty well. And if I just pick the camera up and show you down this end, um, I've also added the extra brace. I've just fastened that piece in. Got a bit carried away with myself before picking up the camera. Um, but that piece is in now. It's got an extra cross brace in, ready for the top to go on there. Uh, so I'm gonna lift this in place. I've lifted two engines out of the um, fiddle yard, just so that I can be sure. I'm not going to hit them when I put the lid back in. So let me just get the camera in the right position. That's it. So I've just cleared this track and that track at the back. Uh, and this should just lift in like it is. Trying to drop it. Imagine if I dropped it. Right there, so right to the back. Right flash there. there. Try and 
that. Perfect. Now I will eventually put some metal strips down the front there just to hold that in place. But it's fine for now. Got the tunnel mouth which lives just at the front here. Which just slot in and it does just like that. Uh, you can see that in the camera down. And then, like I said, I was going to do up this top area. I've simply cut some foam board to do the job. Now, this is nice and light, it's nice and easy, and it's just literally going to slot in like that. Now, one thing to note is this I need a way to fasten this down. Uh, so, I've ordered some sticky back Velcro from Tinternet. And when that arrives, I will just be using some of that. That basically means that I've got this back section covered, but when I do need to get access, I've got something really light and easy that I can just literally lift out a section. Now, I won't go over the top. I won't put tons of Velcro on it. It'll just be enough to hold it in place uh, right the way along. And then I've got this piece here, which is going to go into this back section. Remember, I've added some extra brace in there to support it, and that just fits nicely into there as well. Um, now, there is a height difference on here, uh, and that's fine because I'm also planning on putting the dioramas that are going to go on here uh, on the same kind of foam board so that again they can be the velcro on and stay on, or I can take them off and work on them. One of the things I'm becoming very aware of uh, when I used to work down in the garage with the layout. It was always nice and cool, but now that I'm up here in the loft, even with this insulation, which works a treat in winter, um, because it doesn't really get below kind of 12, 15 degrees up here. Um, it's a little oil radiator and it's absolutely fine, but in summer, it's so well insulated. The problem is when the heat comes into it now, it's taking forever to get back out of here. So yesterday it was 26 outside, it hit 30 in the loft, which is the first time it's ever hit 30. And today it's much cooler outside, it's about 18, but it's still 25 up here because it's just not cooling down. Um, so I just need to make sure I've got lots of things that I can take out of the loft to work on. Especially at the minute this year, um, I've ended up with a lot of time to work on the layout. Uh, normally in summer I'd have a bit of a break and this year I'm probably not going to because there's not a lot else to do. Um, spend all this extra time at home. Um, but anyway, back to this, as you can see, that lifts up absolutely fine well it would if i put that in place in the right place um and sod's lot didn't do that until i've now we'll film it but um, i put that back in position and once that's well thrown in that's why because it was wonky um that opens up and i've got hooks at this side so i can just hook it open i've got a hook at that end as well um and work in here so i'm really pleased with how that's come out I'm going to leave the video there for now. Um, I will be back. I'm going to move straight on to the next project. And my next project is actually to start focusing on the other side of the layout and starting to get some basic scenery in. So where we have the viaduct scene, which moves around into the country scene. Uh, at the moment, we've just got white form and track. Um, my plan is to start working on that in the next video and start to get some basic scenery in over here. Um, thank you, as always, for your support. If it's your first time here, please do give the video a like. Why not subscribe to the channel and follow my journey as I build this loft layout in Engage. Um, thanks, guys, for your support. Any comments, questions, thoughts, pop them down below, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks now. Bye-bye. <laughs>